Hello my Wolfpack and welcome back to a competitive guide video where today we are covering Roaring Moon, the absolute destructive beast that it is. Based 139 attack and 119 speed automatically make this a huge beat stick which can really destroy so many different Pokemon. Not to mention the fact that you have Proto Simpsons on top of that so if you're only a Sun Team you can get 1.3 times damage. Meaning that you are going to cause so many problems for the opponent. Not to mention the fact as well that base 105 speed, base 101 special defense, meaning that you have actually got a really good special wall there as well, not to mention the 71 defense is a little bit lackluster. But if you can get a Will-O-Wisp on some different mons, so if you're running, so for example, um, I don't know, a Sliverwing, we'll have just covered that, that has a Will-O-Wisp, burning a Pokemon can work really, really nicely in your favor there as well. Now we've got tons and tons of useful moves. We've got Acrobatics, Doubles Power if you have an item that's used up. So for example, a Berry or a Sash or something along those lines. Body Slam, Chance to Paralyze. Brick Break, getting rid of Screens because Screens are, whilst not the most common thing, they do come up quite frequently. Crunch, Powerful Stab, uh, Dark Type Attack. Double Edge, Powerful Normal Type Attack. You do take Recoil though, um, so that is a thing. Draco Meteor, Powerful Dragon Type Attack. It is on the special side and there's a fun way to run it, and I will talk about that later on um, in more detail. You've got Dragon Claw, which is a powerful Dragon type attack boosted by Stab. Dragon Dance, which is just an absolutely insane, um, <laughs> absolutely hugely insane move. Plus one attack, plus one speed. Earthquake covers a lot of different mons and hits super effective damage. Iron Head covers your fairy weakness, which is times four, and obviously with that high attack stat, you are probably going to do a lot of damage to it. Outrage, if you're running a choice item or a Lumberry, can work really nicely in combination. Roost, to heal yourself up because, you know, if you're taking damage, you're realistically going to be able to sponge hits and then roosting up to take that um, recovery. Shadow Claw, to cover a few more different Pokemon. Stone Edge is a powerful rock type attack. U-Turn, to be able to get out of there. Fast U-Turn is always a really, really good um, thing to have. And Zen Headbutt, which has a chance to flinch as well, so all of those work in absolutely fantastic favours. Now, in terms of the doubles moves, again, this thing has some incredible moves. You've got Tailwind, allowing for you to double the speed of your team if you're working next to another Pokemon that needs a speed boost. So again, uh, Sliver Wing works in quite a nice combination with it, allowing for you to double its speed, meaning that it can hit really hard. You've then got Protect, allowing for you to obviously stop being hit by a move. Protect is a staple in doubles, obviously. Helping Hand, meaning that you can boost the power of your Pokemon that's next to you if you're running more of a defensive set. Taunt to stop Pokemon from setting up, obviously Fast Taunt is absolutely fantastic um, and that can be used even in singles and then Rock Slide, Rock Slide has the chance to flinch and the fact that you're so fast, um, if you was just to put like a Choice Scarf Rock Slide situation then you know that would work really really nicely as well. In terms of Terra types you've got a few cool Terra types that we can use here, I have put the Steel type here, now the Steel type does mean that you still have your weakness to fighting types, however it does mean that 1, if you use Terra Blast you can hit Ferro types super effective damage as well as with the Iron Head, um, and also gets rid of your Fairy type weakness, meaning it's um, no longer even a problem, it's 0.5 times damage, and also it gets rid of your Ice type weakness as well, so lots and lots of benefits to having the Steel type Terra type as well as the Dragon type terra type you've got the poison terra type as well if you want to get rid of that put of that fairy and also that fighting weakness as well you've then got flying type terra type which i thought is just a nice coverage as well allows you to stop taking damage in the majority of situations um except for with the ice types i think steel and poison are definitely your two your your two go-to's here with flying being another potential option that could work in your favor so with this thing, you have got so many fantastic sets. I've got three um, gem general single sets, one double set, and one gimmick set, which you will see later on in the video. So with this, we have got our first set, which is a Dragon Dance set. I would say this is probably the most common type of set you're going to see, this or a choice item. And I've put Dragon Dance with Life Orb. You could run um, something like the Fairy Reducing Berry. I think it might be the Roselli Berry. I'm not 100% sure off the top of my head. I can never remember them when trying to think of them, but I always have to search them up. But the Fairy Reducing Berry is also going to be a really good option. Um, you could even use Leftovers. So many different things that are available to be used. But you have got Dragon Ball here, powerful Dragon type attack boost by stab obviously a plus one um, which is going to take you to 621 uh, in base power I think which means that you're going to do some some real destruction especially if you have a dragon terror type as well earthquake powerful ground type attack obviously hits a lot of different Pokemon for 
um, at least neutral damage. And I've gone for Throat Chop as the dark type attack. You could go for Crunch if you want to. I thought Throat Chop, there is a lot of Pokemon, or are a lot of Pokemon, I should say, that are able to use the um, sound based moves and also with things like Throat Spray, you know, that Throat Chop can be really beneficial to kind of stop that from happening. EV wise, I've gone for max speed and max attack with an adamant nature, some more attack, less special attack, and four EVs in special defense. Realistically, at plus one speed, you are going to be working very, very, very well. Uh, meaning that essentially you're going to outspeed the vast majority of Pokemon. Anything 119 plus doesn't generally run a choice scarf. It is, it's less common than, um, than it is common. So, you know, having a plus one, you don't really need the plus speed nature in this scenario. Um, you can run it if you're really concerned or you don't think you're going to get Dragon Dance up, but um, realistically, with the amount of bulk this thing has, you should be able to live a hit to be able to get a Dragon Dance. Just be cautious of the Fairy type. If you want to run a Terror type and immediately Terror, then obviously that can work well for you as well. Moving on to our second Roaring Moon, we have got a Choice Scarf set. So, as I said, with this speed, you can increase up uh, your power, sorry, you increase up your speed and outspeed basically everything. Or you can go for a choice band on this as well. They're interchangeable at this point. Protosynthesis, you will always have um, the increase in the attack. So if you run a Sun Team, then if you have max attack, you'll have one, times 1 1.3 in attack, which obviously on top of your already huge attacks, that is going to be destructive. Move-wise, I've gone for Dragon Claw. You could go for Outrage here if you wanted to. I don't like getting confused and I don't like being stuck into a move, especially if there's a Fairy type around. So I prefer to run Dragon Claw. Earthquake, again, powerful ground type attack. Stone Edge, um, powerful rock type attack, which again can hit things like Ice types, super effective damage. And also U turn. As I said, that fast U turn is a really good staple to have on a team. So this could work as a lead. You come in, if it works, great. If it doesn't work, you can U turn out and immediately, uh, realistically, you're going to go first. If you're not running the Choice Scarf and you're running Choice Band, you can actually also see if the opponent is Choice Scarf um, in a lot of scenarios as well. So it can give you that good information. EV wise, max speed, max attack. Um, with this, actually, I don't think I'll go for the Jolly Nature. I think I just clicked on the, the um, guest spread or the recommended spread. I would go for the Adamant Nature here, some more attack, less special attack, meaning you get that Protosynthesis, you get the increase. But if I was going for the Choice Standard set, I would definitely go for the Jolly Nature there. Moving on to our third Roaring Moon, we have got uh, a bit more of an interesting set, I will say. So I've put Leftovers on here, allowing you to get some passive recovery each turn. And I have used Jawlock as a move. And not very many Pokemon get Jawlock. It was the exclusive move of Dreadnought, but obviously now it's got by uh, Roaring Moon as well. And it prevents both the user and the target from switching out. Now this can be dangerous if a fairy type switches in, but that's when you have your terror type, and you could even have terror blast on here to cover for that as well. You've then got your uh, roost to allow you to heal up your, yourself. If you get put in a situation where, for example, you have a psychic type that's coming against you and you've jaw locked, obviously one, you're going to do a lot of damage, and two, you can potentially set up a load of dragon dancers on that if you was to run dragon dance set scenario which would definitely work as well but roost healing meaning that you can just play some shenanigans here you've got body slam to be able to paralyze you've got outrage to cause the damage again you don't have to worry about fairy type switching in because there's no switching in this case uh, but if you do take it out and a fairy type comes in again you're kind of screwed so outrage is an option to run here it's a bit more of a quirky set but you definitely could run this with a large variety of different moves um and you could even run this with setup like quite easily but i thought jaw lock was a really cool move that i really wanted to show off um on this i didn't put in the recommended move list because i just wanted to show it off in this set evs for this one max hp max attack realistically i'm not worried too much about speed here because you've got the ability to heal yourself up so that's kind of the option there. I'd say out of the three sets, this is definitely the weakest, but a jaw lock could be chucked in on to either of those other sets. Um, wouldn't recommend it necessarily on the uh, choice set, but the Dragon Dance set definitely would work as well. And moving on to the double set, as I said, this has got a few doubles moves that you can definitely use. Uh, you have got uh, Tailwind, allowing for you to double the speed of your team for three turns. Now, obviously, if you've got a slow Pokemon, that works really, really well in your favor. Taunt to stop anything from setting up. Um, or causing any problems. So for example, if you've got a follow me user, obviously taunting that straight away, that's not going to be a problem for you anymore. Rock slide, as I said, fast rock slide, chance to flinch, going to be huge, and realistically with your attack power, going to be destructive. 
Breaking Swipe as well. Now, Breaking Swipe, I believe, hits both Pokemon. Don't hold me to that. I'm pretty sure it hits both Pokemon, and it lowers their attack by one as well, meaning that your defense isn't going to be as much of a concern, and also meaning that any offensive sweepers are going to be much less of an offensive sweeper, and you can use that typically outspeeding the vast majority of Pokemon. Now, EV-wise, I haven't actually put the EVs on this, but uh, I would go with either the fast uh, physical sweeper if you're planning on going for the rock slide breaking sweep aspects of it more. But if you're planning on going on more of the kind of tailwind support, you might want to go max speed, max HP. Um, again, probably the Jolly Nature would be the best in this scenario just to make sure that you have got as much speed as possible. Now, I put leftovers on here. You can run leftovers. You can run like so many different um, options. You can run Expert Belt. You could run, uh, I'm trying to think of other things, Life Orb. You could even run things like the Roselli Berry, I think it's the Roselli Berry, or any berry that reduces down the amount of damage. Chopper Berry as well, uh, to reduce down, reduce down any fighting damage. Um, so yeah, this thing works really, really fantastically in doubles. Uh, as either a Sweeper Mon, or also a bit of a Support Mon, or a combination of both, which you don't really get in very many Pokemon. And the final set is a gimmick set. Now, base 55 Special Attack is absolutely awful. This is why it's a gimmick set. But it does get access to a lot of really good special moves. So I put the Throat Spray on here, allowing for you to Throat Spray Hyper Voice, run this in the Sun Team, gets 1.3 times, plus the 1.5 from your special attack. There are no other ways of raising your special attack unless you bat and pass like a nasty plot um, onto this, which actually would be really kind of cool. And then you've got, uh, obviously, the Hyper Voice you use straight away, get the plus one in your special attack. You've then got Draco Meteor. Which allows, actually no, you wouldn't be able to use Protosynthesis with this because your attack stat is still too high. Um, I just realised that, so scratch that bit before. But yeah, Draco Meteor, powerful Dragon type attack. Obviously, it does lower down your special attack, but um, you know this thing isn't designed to have longevity. This thing is designed just to be a one and done sort of thing. But you have also got Dark Pulse, powerful Dark type attack, and also Air Slash, ability to flinch. Really, really cool. 30% chance to flinch. Obviously, it does have the chance to miss, but, you know, fast flinches could be fun to use. Um, I just thought it'd be an interesting gimmick set, and that's why I've labelled it as a gimmick set. It is not the kind of set that you're going to use in high-level competitive play. This is the kind of thing that you're going to play with your friends and have a laugh about it. But, yeah, that is going to be all for Roaring Moon. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know what sets you have and that you've come up for Roaring Moon. Any modifications that you would have on here. But I'm going to finish this off. So hopefully a good one. And I will see you soon.